beautiful day. Absolutely beautiful day. Today. I am here at our daughter's school waiting for them to get done with Girl Scouts. But <clears throat> I wanted to Wait a minute, let me see. Sorry about that. Trying to um trying to uh um make sure that my volume is up so you all can hear me first of all. <laughs> but then second of all, I really um wanted to I guess offer some clarity with regard to the post that I put on Facebook earlier this morning. Um, I literally woke up out of my sleep and started typing. Literally woke up out of my sleep and started typing and didn't really read what I wrote until after I had posted it and then I went back and read what I put. <laughs> and I was quite surprised at what I had put on Facebook. And I thought some people would be offended by what I had put and that some people may not understand. Um, and that concerned me. Because I want it, I, I try really hard to make sure that what I'm saying, that there is clarity in what I'm saying and that there is no misunderstanding with what, with, with what I am saying. My husband oftentimes gets on my case about me being too thorough with people because he feels like I'm explaining my life away when in actuality I am making sure that you understand. My agenda is to help you understand, not explain my life away, but for you to get what it is that I'm trying to say to you on no uncertain terms. What I put on Facebook this morning to any pastor or any man who is, man or woman for that matter, who is in the body of Christ and functions in a position of leadership, if I have offended you, that was not my agenda. However, I will not apologize for what I put. And the reason why I won't apologize is because it is the truth. There was a great deal of compassion in what I said due to the fact that the heart of God is what we all should be striving to achieve. We should all be trying to gain his trust. Um in our character, in our ability to lead. When I think about Abraham, when I think about Abraham and how he came to know the Lord, if Abraham were in 2017, we would label him crazy. We would say he was schizophrenic. Listening to a voice he had never heard. Abandoning his beliefs. Abandoning the culture. Abandoning the teachings that he grew up learning coming to love and understand and practice. When you consider 
Abraham. Here's the thing. He grew up in a culture that had graven images and they worshipped them. He was in idolatry. He came from a lineage of people that worshipped graven images. He had never even heard of this thing called God. And so for him to all of a sudden right in the thick of this idolatrous belief he all of a sudden comes to hear this voice he hears this voice out of nowhere actually maybe the voice came from within him but he hears this voice tell him go to a land that I will show you. Now anybody in their right mind is going to look at Abraham if anyone if he were to ever tell that story to anybody they would look at Abraham like okay we need to get you fixed we need you to get you to the quickest we need the quickest route to get to the, the, the person that fixes brains because you have lost your mind But, he had never heard this voice, but he knew it was God. How did that happen? How in the world can you, who never even knew there was a God, understand the voice speaking to you as God and obey it? Abraham did not wrestle within himself about this voice he heard. He didn't. He was so convicted within himself that he left. He left his family. He picked up everything he owned and said, I'm gone. I'm out. Now, with regard to the post that I put on Facebook this morning, there are many of us whose last name bears a lot of weight because it is so deeply rooted in faith. It is so deeply rooted. If you say a person's name, last name, they're going to automatically link you to a certain hierarchy within the body of Christ but to be a part of something that runs so deeply since whoever knows how long if the God that you've known or have been taught all these years since you were a little girl little boy in 1930 40 if the God that your grandparents and your grandparents grandparents came to know and love you are driving way too fast in a school zone, right next to a school really anyway sorry sidebar but if you come to know that God and then you learn later on in life that the very God you were taught about all these years all the studying that you have done everything that you were taught to build your faith on and believe was an error how quickly would you be to abandon your faith how quickly would you be how quickly would you move to reroute your belief system if everything you were raised to trust in to access God was wrong would you stop 
And I did. I asked the question at the end of the post and I said, would you? Would you stop? Would you quit? Would you abandon everything that you said you believed? Would you abandon it? I'm not sure many of us would. I don't think many of us have the strength or the fortitude. I think we rely entirely too heavily, too heavily upon what others think about us. We rely too heavily on the connections that we have. We rely too heavily upon the name and the person that bears the name and the weight of that person's name to abandon how you see what you've always thought to be true in your life. I think that that's powerful. People have become so attached to people and not people as in the actual person but the thoughts that people think of us we become much too attached to the thoughts that people have of us to abandon anything in all honesty We have just adopted so much of what society deems acceptable. We have adopted so much of what society says is right. We've integrated too much of the world's philosophies into the church to even begin to ask the question, what can we do? <laughs> What can we do to bring more people to the body of Christ? Because my thing is this. If you get the answer, will you do it? If it's opposite what you've always been taught. Would you really begin to put a plan in place if it was opposite what you've always known? Are you strong enough to bear the blunt or the brunt of being shunned by the elite in the church because you're doing it different than they did? Are you strong enough? Are you capable of, 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 of shouldering the weight of walking away from what you've always known and doing it the way God really said do it? Because here's the thing. That type of question isn't for Facebook. That type of question is the answer to that type of question you find on your face. You find that type, the answer to that type of question while you're on your knees praying. You don't go on Facebook and ask what ways are most effective that you have found to bring people into the body of Christ nobody can answer that question for you that is a question strictly between you and God to be perfectly honest and my thing is this if everybody is so concerned about effective principles on how to win people to the body of Christ why isn't every big name pastor in your city getting together and having a prayer shut in to find out out from God himself why is it that every pastor ain't locking themselves up in a church with a, another group of pastors of every denomination because we all know that there's no denomination in God I'm talking Baptist Church of God in Christ Methodist African Episcopalian I'm talking all of it get every leader in the city to where you live lock yourselves up in the sanctuary and find out what God is saying but nobody does that they go on Facebook and I'm not I'm not discrediting you I am not judging you I'm not doing anything all I'm saying is, what is God saying about it? A lot of the answers that we're seeking, only God can answer them. Only God can answer those questions. Find out from Him. Why am I going to purchase something from Best Buy 
and then go to Sears and have them fix it. It's not going to work. I'm not going to take my Mercedes to a Chrysler dealership. I'm not going to do it. They may be able to answer a couple of questions, but they can't work on my car. Please believe. You cannot take a high-end elite automobile to a garage uh, in some alleyway of some rundown neighborhood and expect for them to fix your vehicle. We need to really put things in their proper perspective. If souls is really the agenda, why not go to the source of all souls? Because I'm telling you one thing, they're, they're, they're twiddling their thumbs and trying to figure things out just like you are. They don't have no answers for you. They cannot give you an answer to that question, sweetheart. You want to know why? Because they're trying to figure it out just like you. They are trying to weed through and interpret the word of God. Same as you. Same as you. Same as you. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some scholars. There are some highly uh, uh, educated in the hermeneutics and hominutics and all of those wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 attributes and characteristics, all of those things that you can add to what you know about the Word of God and about God, add to your relationship with Him and to enhance your relationship and to bring you to a place of enlightenment. But guess what? Guess what? If we are indeed as enlightened, if we are as mature as we say we are in Christ, why are we asking the question? The question should never even be asked. You ought to already know. But many of us have grown up in the church and are, again, our roots are so deep within the church that we don't know anything else. We don't know nothing else. And so it confuses and it baffles us when there's someone who has not been raised in the church and who has not got their foot in the door of holiness. It confuses and it baffles us because we're like, okay, what am I doing wrong? You ain't being real. You ain't being transparent. That's what's wrong. I'm as transparent as I know to be on Facebook. And, and, and sometimes it may not be the best outlet for me to express myself because people, again, are judgmental. But I'm going to tell you about me. I'm going to tell you something. I sit and have lunch and tea with all the skeletons in my closet here. Can nobody bring nothing out or nothing up about me that I have not already acknowledged. I've, I've, I've taken the sting from the weaponry of those who would seek to use what I have gone through in life against me. You can't come to me with no mess because I've already put it out there. What power do you have? When everything I know and everything I'm doing, I'm living it. I'm living it right now. I'm living it. You can't use nothing against me. You can't come tell my husband nothing about me. He don't already know. And he loves me anyway. Flaws, faults and all. For real. And I'm the same way with him. Same way. So if you are interested in knowing... What steps to take to be more effective in the body of Christ? What you can do to, hello, hi, sweetheart. <laughs> the little girl's like, okay, who is she talking to? Lord, we need help. Um, but if your agenda is to find out how to come up with a plan to bring people to Christ, you need to go to God in all seriousness. 
you really and truly need to go to God and you need to be asking him because the same people that you are inquiring information yes they may have good ideas yes they may have uh, 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 they, they may have several uh, uh, points of, 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 of interest to bring you the information that, it, that you need but if God has given you charge over a flock, the agenda that he has for someone else's church may not be the same as the one that he may have for yours. He may want you to go a different route with yours. And if his route that he has for you, for the flock that he has given you, is completely absurd to everybody else, are you willing to take the chance of abandoning everything that you know and everything that you have been brought up believing was true? Are you willing to take the chance of having people who have been brought up in the way to 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 a certain degree and in the knowledge and coming of the knowledge of the truth of, of of who God is? Are you willing to abandon all of that? Are you willing to become the sacrificial lamb? And many of us are not. Truthfully, many of us are not. Even for Christ. We're not willing to do it. This is our bread and butter. This is how I get paid. I don't have a problem at all with a pastor, not only being a pastor, but having several different streams of income coming in. This is not the only uh, source of, of, of God uh, God has given me. I am so for you finding something else to do. And don't get me wrong. I am so for applauding and celebrating the people of God and celebrating God but my thing is some of these pastors anniversary parties and celebrations and things like that y'all spending all of this money for this man and I'm thinking okay where is God in all of this where is he we should be celebrating him why aren't we celebrating him we're celebrating. We're puffing the man of God up. We're placing him on a place on, on a pedestal, but nobody is acknowledging God. I have been to to some of these pastoral anniversary uh, uh, celebrations, and I'm telling you, linen clay tablecloths and napkins. I mean, just catered till the hilt. Thousands of dollars. I'm not saying don't appreciate him. What I'm saying is sometimes we go too far. And then we get questions like what can we do to effectively bring people to Christ? How about you sit the man of God down and you put him on the same level as everybody else? Because God sees him that way. How about you recognize that God is no respecter of person? And that because he is a pastor, he or she is a pastor, doesn't make them more valuable. It doesn't make them, uh, it doesn't make them anything, quite honestly. It doesn't make them anything except human sinful just like the rest of us that had it not been for the grace of God there go I absolutely yes but here's the thing there are some people sitting in the pews that have gone through more than the people who are sitting behind the pulpit you done gone through more hell and it's in the hell that creates the character it's your it's the hell that you've experienced that is creating in you both to will and do of his good pleasure Hello? So, <laughs> what, what, what is all this for? Choir robes? Uh, uh, I mean, just all of this. It, I'm, I'm just looking around in my mind at all the churches throughout the years of my life of gone, going to churches. And I'm like, why did they do this? Why did they do that? If it's all about God really all about God 
why are we marching in the sanctuary? Who said this was the right thing to do? Who said this was invoking the presence of God? Where did you hear that? Who told you that? Who told you that ushers wear black and white on Sunday? Who who told you that Bible study was on Wednesday? Who who said this? Who who I mean, who who where is this written? Where is this written? Who said? By what standards is all of this taking place? Who said that this was of God? Who said this was God? Who said? Where? Show me. I want to know. I want to see it. I want to see it. Because if we got questions like the ones that I've been seeing on Facebook as of late, then surely it's not in what we've already been doing. So something has to change. And it has to be different and unorthodox. It's got to be completely different and out of the box of what we've already been doing. Because the same chicken and fish frying dinners and all of that spaghetti and stuff in the car washes on the weekends and all the, uh, all of that stuff that we've been doing is not working. So, we need to do something completely different and out of the box. And we've got to be willing to go so far beyond what is normal for a church to do when it comes to effectiveness in winning souls to Christ. You got to get beyond you. You got to get out of the way. And some of us don't want to get out of the way. Some of us want to be the star of the show. It's the truth. Some of us want to be the star of the show. And while I don't have a problem with you wanting to be the star of the show, I have to admit that I am concerned. I have to admit that it concerns me. It really does. When I see questions like that, and then I see this program when I enter the church and then somebody gets up and reads the program to the congregation and then they got the program on the website too. Y'all spending way too much time on Sunday morning with traditional regulatory housekeeping items it's too much and I just want to know where is it written that God is in all of this where is God in all of this all of the shenanigans and the theatrics that you know there are people in the body of Christ who spend literally every waking moment in church and are no more saved than they were before and so I'm just questioning I'm just wondering I'm just I'm just wondering I'm asking a simple and very harmless question that in my opinion deserves an answer so if any pastors uh, laymen or leaders in the body of Christ um, are willing to answer this question I, I need an answer honestly because the ministry is not within the four walls of the church. And I, I, I'm sorry to say that every Sunday, every third Sunday of the month, you delegate to street ministry really isn't effective. I'm not trying to discourage your efforts, but in all honesty, It ain't working. If questions like the questions that I've seen, and I've seen them more than once, and it has come from several different pastors here in the city, all asking the same question, and evidently no answers have come forth that they are willing to implement into their plan of salvation for the people because I still see the questions as I scroll through week after week and month after month. 
So evidently no one has come up with a solution or an effective manner to win souls. How about people be transparent? How about people be real? How about people who have actually smoked crack and been delivered from crack minister to people who have done that? You know, I mean, how about people who have been raped and molested actually minister to people who have been abused? How about people be real and honest and say, you know what, I really don't like people. In all honesty, I, I, I really don't care to be involved in, in, in certain things because I just don't like being around people. Be honest. Be 100% honest. Be 100% honest. Quit playing. There is way too much playing going on in the body of Christ. And yet questions like, how do we effectively get people to come in? Quit playing church. Let's start there. Stop playing. Stop playing. Please. Because you ain't doing nothing but taking up space for somebody who is out there waiting for God to be revealed to them, waiting for the time and the opportunity for him to come in and show himself to be the God that we all know he really is. But because you've been raised, because you done been through, you have all the answers. I'm just, I'm just throwing things out there. I really am. When I think about certain characters in the body of Christ or in the uh, in the Bible, it literally like I, I think about the things that they have gone through and literally step by step, verse by verse, I go through and I'm like, now, if he were to do that today or if someone were to see that today, if someone were to experience that today, they would commit themselves to the psychiatric ward. There's a lot of supernatural things that God has done and has implemented in people's lives that if he were to do that very thing today, honey, it, it would it would it would shake you to your core. And some of them, I'm sure some of the people who some of the people who read my post this morning if God came and told you if God came and told you that the very thing your nana and your nana's nana and your uh, come on Carol now you know I'm telling the truth if God himself came knocking on your door and said hey guess what uh, I heard you was looking for me and um here I am, and I'm here to answer your question, and I'm telling you that you got it wrong. This is what it's really all about. If God himself, in the form of Jesus, told you that, would you, and he gave you a formula for which you needed to move forward with your agenda in winning souls to him, would you do it? Or would you brush him off? The God that we were raised to believe, if we saw him today, we'd walk right by him. We wouldn't know him. Because he wouldn't look anything like we, what we would expect for him to look. He may not smell like what we would expect for him to, to, to smell. I mean, you, we, we read the word of God. And we see that, you know, the scripture says that he was not fashioned in a way that anyone desire to would look upon him. Um, we, we hear that and we see that. But we, when you look at a bum on the street or when you look for, at someone who's been released from Lou, LaRue Carter, he would probably be along those lines. In all honesty. But some of us have been so churched. Some of us have been so, so out of touch with the reality of 
that God is in everything. He's he's everywhere. He is in the air that we breathe. He literally is. And and the agendas that people keep coming up with it's not working. It's not working. People are dying. People are dying. And we're letting them because we're sitting at the round table trying to figure stuff out instead of just going and doing what he said do. I'm not saying blow the church building up. I'm not saying that. You got a mortgage. Be sensible. And plus there's jail for arson. I'm not saying don't be practical and use the wisdom God has given you to win the lost. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is this. We need to move out of our own. I know, Demo. Ain't nobody studying you, black Jesus. <laughs> yes, they do. Oh, yes, you are. You my big brother. I promise you are. I love you. I really do. You you about the realest pastor I've ever known. Uh, beside my husband, you you really give it to the people straight. You really do. And straight talk, no chaser, as they say. I mean, but here's the thing. Demetrius, I love him. But he's not accepted in certain circles. He's not. Why? Because he's out of the box. He's completely out of the normal every day, every Sunday, every week, church, as usual. It, it's different. I mean, this dude raps. Come on now. He raps. He's an artist. He's a rap artist with dreads. If he ain't John the Baptist, oh, as he said, the black Jesus. But I'm like, his his methods are completely, <laughs> you welcome. <laughs> but he's completely different the way he approaches things. But he's transparent in the way he, he is so relatable from, from, from the, the, the scholar all the way down to the five-year-old. He's relatable. And that's why his church is growing like crazy. He's got whites, Mexicans, uh, he's got blacks, he's got everybody at his church. You're doing well. Say hello. Hey, yeah, we'll we'll definitely get together, uh, Demetrius. I got it. Um, where is Sissy at? You don't know where Sissy's at? Okay. She's in the art room. She's in the art room? All right, honey. All right, y'all. I got to go get my puka butts. But um, I just uh, wanted to say that little bit because it was so... I mean, I literally woke up out of my sleep and started typing. I'm like, that... This is... Because it was weighing on me. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Why aren't we getting this right, God? Why are we not getting this right? And the reason can't... Baby, go back inside, honey, and use it. You can. We're still here. Hey, take your book bag off. Let me go take care of my babies. I love y'all. Talk to you soon.